Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and today I will be reading Tell Me Lies. I'm sorry, this cover is so confusing. Tell Me Lies by Carola Lovering. And I picked this up because I knew that it was gonna be turning into a TV show. It has since been out for probably a month or two now. I haven't watched it, I haven't read it. I haven't heard anyone's opinions on either the show or the book. So I just, I wanna know what's going on. This is about a girl named Lucy. It's like new adult. So she's in college and she meets this guy and I think it's about their toxic relationship. So I'm expecting some vibes here. Maybe like the best possible outcome is that it's gonna be like Normal People by Sally Rooney. That's what I'm hoping for. That was messy and not even a romance. It was just like there were weird, I don't know. I don't know what was going on there. That was a book I read where it could have been like five stars or I could have rated it two stars and felt exactly the same. I remember it took me so long to grapple with my rating. I think I ended up on five stars though because of how well it was written. This could also be like Magnolia Parks or God forbid, After. If I have to have one of those, I hope it's more like Magnolia Parks, which is just as messy and annoyingly toxic. But for some reason, there's a, there a little more flair to this than there was to After. When it comes to movie or show to book adaptations, I do sometimes enjoy it. And I find that I enjoy the show or movie more if I watched it first. So I'm gonna not start this right now and I'm going to watch the first episode on Hulu and just try to get a vibe, try to get a vibe. And just so you know, I will be doing full spoilers at the end once I've finished. I'm not gonna go as I read because I tried that in another video before and I got so confused while editing. So I'm just going to wait till I finish the book. I will give you fair warning at the end of the video when that is about to happen though. So otherwise, enjoy this spoiler-free vlog. <laughs> the first episode and I actually really liked it. It was high drama, good music from like the 2010-2011s because the majority of it happened when they like were starting college and I think visually it was really good and good performances so I think it'll be a good show and now I'm debating whether I should just binge the show or read the book. The first season is 10 episodes um, but I think I'm gonna start the book. We started the show off in the present timeline when Lucy, our main character, and Steven are out of college already. Lucy's going to her friend's wedding who she went to college with too and so she's gonna see Steven for the first time in I think four years. It seems like something really fucked up went down here, not just in their relationship but with their whole friend group. There's gonna be like maybe some frenemy issues. I'm ready for that friend drama. <laughs> And then we go into a full flashback from when Lucy starts college. She's got some issues with her mom. Her dad is dead. So she has some trauma. She says that she really doesn't get excited for much as in relationships. And so I think, oh gosh, I'm worried about her. I'm worried for her. Also in the first episode, someone dies, which I was not expecting. <laughs> there was also a lot of kissing right after people wake up without brushing their teeth, which is something that grosses me out and it takes me out of whatever I'm watching every single time it happens because I cannot, I cannot stand it. All I'm thinking about is how nasty their breath smells. Let's read the first sentence. Dedication is for my mother, the original Lucy, you are the light of my life. Ooh, I wonder if this is like sort of loosely based on her mom's life. And to everyone who's ever had a Stephen DeMarco, this book is for you. Okay, so Stephen in the show, they made it sound like he was pretty fucked up. Like, I don't know. It just sounded like he really broke her heart and maybe took advantage of her. And the first time they meet is at a frat party or something. And he literal, I don't know if it's just the way that they directed it, but I picked up on it because, you know, maybe because I'm a girl and I feel like I could sense it, but he was like cornering her into a corner and it wasn't, I don't know, maybe it was supposed to be sexy, but it seemed predatory. I don't know. But then the rest of the episode, he seemed like a decent guy. So maybe he's going to pull like a Holden from, not a Holden, I think his name was like Harden. <laughs> or something <laughs> from after and like he's doing this for some sort of bet. I I don't I really don't know what to expect here. And that's exciting. I like intrigue. I want to know what's happening. They did a good job with that. The quotes in the beginning are making me think that he's going to be sneaky in a really bad way. Sometimes you make your mind up about something without knowing why and your decision persists by the power of inertia. Every year it gets harder to change. I shiver thinking about how easy it is to be totally wrong about people, to see one tiny part of them and confuse it for the whole. That does not sound good. Chapter one. 
<clears throat> Lucy, I wake two minutes before my 5.45 a.m. alarm goes off on instinct like the neurotic sleep deprived New Yorker I've become. All right, let's get into it. She's kind of giving I'm not like other girls. When was this published? I think it was published in eight, 2018, the height of not like other girls. Whew, this might be a little tough. Okay, wait, I'm in my first chapter that Steven has um, and he's thinking back on when he first met Lucy and he literally says, Lucy was different from the rest of them. <laughs> She's beautiful, but it's more complex than that. Lucy's beautiful in the way that makes it hard to stop staring, in the way that attractiveness becomes something you have to figure out. The best part is, she has no idea. Okay, why was this a thing that literally everyone was writing? First, that she's different from the other girls because she's not wearing makeup or she's not wearing a dress. And second, that she's so gorgeous, but she has no idea. Why can't she know that? I got 25% of the way through and when I tell you I'm entirely engaged in this, like I do not want to stop reading it. What is happening? Uh, it is different from the show, but it's way more dramatic on the show. A lot more happens in the show. They're obviously trying to like get you sucked in, which definitely worked. And this is a little slower paced, which I do like in a book. And there's no murder. I think that's gonna come up later, so I feel like I sort of already got spoiled for something. Steven, the dude, is definitely predatory, so I definitely picked up on that. He is kind of like that guy in this movie. And he thought that Lucy was like Blair Waldorf. He literally said Blair Waldorf. And so I think he is, and now that I look at the actor who I'm not sure how, how, why he's playing a college student. He looks 35 years old, but he looks kind of like a Dollar Tree Chuck Bass. And he is the slimiest part of Chuck Bass. Um, this guy is sleazy. He's trying to just sleep with as many people as he can, but he's very like sociopathic about it. He studies the girls like a, like a serial, like the guy from You. And he tells them whatever they want to hear. And it's so funny actually, because as fucked up as it is, it's almost comical because you get to see in his point of view about how clinical and cold he is. And then on the flip side, you have Lucy who thinks she's falling for him. There is this thing in the book and in the show that is called the unforgivable thing. She hates her mom for doing this unforgivable thing. They tease it so much that it's kind of annoying. But at one point she tells it to Steven. She says what happens, except we don't find out what it is because it's through Steven's point of view and he's high and he's just pretending to listen to her. He doesn't give a shit. He just wants to sleep with her. And then you go to her point of view of it and she's like, oh my God, guys. I underlined it and said LMAO because she said, he listened, he really listened. And I could see that it made him genuinely happy. Nobody listened like that. And it's like, girl, oh, I feel so bad. She's only 18. She doesn't know that people are this shitty. Let me see what else I underlined. Oh, at one point he kind of like, they talk twice maybe. He corners her in the library and kisses her mid-sentence. And he says, not enough guys take advantage of the mid-sentence kiss. Girls go crazy for it. Romantic in any and all scenarios. Not true. I've had this happen to me and I got so pissed off. Of course, I didn't say anything because I was really passive back then, but it was gross. It was someone that I didn't know really well either. And it was just like, <laughs> it was so funny because he had been talking that whole night, like nonstop. I couldn't even get an, a word in. And the first like sentence out of my mouth the entire night, he cuts me off with a kiss and I'm just like, bro. So no. I think he's got this wrong, but I think he's got a few things wrong, if you know what I mean. So in a way, this is kind of like Magnolia Parks, this movie, and oh, what was that other? After, there are some definite after things, but so far I'm liking this better than any of them. It's kind of reminding me of prep in that sort of way that book was told, although I haven't read that book in like eight years, so don't quote me. Now for some of the differences I've noticed, I did start the second episode while I was eating dinner, but some of the differences I noticed just in the first episode and this quarter of the book, besides the high level drama in the show, 
is that they like extra traumatize these kids, <laughs> these main characters in the show. So in here, both of their parents are alive and in their lives. And in the show, I guess they never said it, but they kind of make it apparent that Lucy's father is no longer in the picture. And I assumed that he was dead just from some context clues. And in the show, Steven says that his dad has left him when he was like six or something. In the book, his mom has bipolar disorder. And so she's sort of, she's like in his life, but he and his siblings have always lived with his dad. So it is funny that they're changing the sort of trauma of the characters. Lucy is very different, I think, from the book and the show, at least at this point. But she seems really naive in this book and very trusting whereas in the show she seems kind of like a little more similar to steven not that she's being manipulative or borderline psychotic but she doesn't really she's never really felt intrigue in other people and she doesn't really like believe in love sort of attitude which i think they're gonna bond over and then fall in love ironically there have been i noticed in the very first few pages a lot of talk about food and like diet culture in a very weird way. As you read more, you can tell that uh, Lucy is gonna struggle with some body image issues. So be prepared for that in case that's something you guys are trying to avoid or anything. But I hope they do something more with it only because if they just leave it at what they've said, it's it's very uncomfortable and it's not, it's not good. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I've talked way too long about this, but I think I might have so much fun with this, which is so weird because it's not really funny. It's supposed to be toxic and it is, but it, it's weirdly funny. I don't know why. That might mean I'm a sociopath. Guys, I can't stop reading this, but you know what it's actually reminding me of? The Spectacular Now or Spectacular Now? I think it really is reminding me of that, except for Steven here is much more sociopathic, but I love that book. Hello. Last night I got to the halfway mark, loving it just as much, which is just a weird thing to say about a book with such unlikable characters because Steven is an actual sociopath and there's a whole sort of paragraph where he's kind of getting into it about how he doesn't feel the same things that other people feel and that he's taught himself to act a certain way and he studies people to mirror them and to you know seem normal but he does make the distinction here he doesn't want to hurt people but he could so I think that that's what makes him a sociopath versus a psychopath. But those neither of those two words have come up, except for in his brain, he says, girls in general are psychotic, which is just, is just so funny coming from him. So there are those tiny bits of humor, but our girl Lucy, she, she is fallen down the rabbit hole here and she's very much aware of it. I think that's very real. And I just, I want to take her and I want to get her out of that hole. Ugh. There's also this huge sort of drama that's you know is going to happen, first of all, because it was in the show uh, in a very different way. Like they switched the characters up and scrambled them around a little bit, but they sort of revealed something in that very first episode. And they've revealed it it's like in little crumbs here and there. So it's not gonna be so much a reveal of who did this happen to and who did it. It's gonna be something else. And so that sort of anticipation is kind of interesting. However, I don't think this is a plot story. Like I'm not reading it for the plot, where I think I'd be watching the show for the plot, if that makes any sense. But I'm very much enjoying this. Also, the page I ended on, um, Lucy's in her room and she's listening to her friends like party out there and she's in her room by herself because she's totally isolating herself. And she's talking about some of the songs that they're playing. And then all of a sudden, I just love it when a book has the title in it. I finished it. The second half is really about their life after college. And I think it really slows down. The pacing changes. In the first half, it's them in college going back and forth. And it's really like either the same month or you're getting updates pretty much every month. And then halfway through, Steven is out of college. Lucy is still in college. It's like six month jumps from every point of view. Um, so the pacing's a lot different and then things start getting a little tiresome. I didn't truly get annoyed with the two of them until page 
around 300. So like this far, I was still super engaged and loving it. It took until this far into the book for me to get annoyed, which I actually think is impressive because in Magnolia Parks, I can't even tell you how soon I was annoyed. I think it was like within the first chapter. So it's really, this is not a romance. I, I For some reason, I thought this was going to be a situation like in, what is it, Cruel Intentions, where the guy is manipulative and secretive and he tells lies and she's this good girl and eventually they fall in love and we all know how that movie ends. If not, you should watch it, it's fun. And so I was expecting something similar here, but I wanna tell you right now, this is not a romance, okay? It's not. As for the ending, I did tear up at something and it was something that I wasn't expecting to tear up at. I did enjoy the ending. I feel like we left off in a place that we were supposed to. This was a good place to end off at for the reader, but also for the characters. It makes sense. Well, I'm happy that it ended this way. I do think it jumped significantly. I mean, there was a change in one of the characters that I feel like we didn't get enough transition into that decision. However, there was a significant time jump that we didn't get to see the character. So I'm going to, I'm going to totally try to forget about that. I'm going to give this a four, maybe even a four and a half because wow, I just wasn't expecting this. I will say that the, the little bit of drama that was in here, the sort of almost a thriller aspect, but not really because you were kind of told it throughout the story, but it was more like a revelation for one of the characters. I feel like that was kind of weirdly handled. Like I'm glad it was in the book, but it was just kind of weird. And it felt almost in the epilogue that the author knew where she wanted to go and where she wanted to end up, but she didn't really know how to get there. I know I've talked a lot about how this is like certain things, talking about like Magnolia Parks and Cruel Intentions. And so let me give you a couple more examples. I feel like this is a mixture between normal people, Cruel Intentions, and weirdly Daisy Jones and the Six. That last one, this has nothing to do with music, although there's a lot of mention of Fleetwood Mac, which is obviously where they got that song that they reference and this title of this book. But it's not about that. It doesn't take place in the 70s, but I cannot explain why this kind of feels a similar tone to it. It's very sort of point blank maybe is a good example. It's like, I don't know, it's like telling you this story without going into flowery descriptions. I don't know how to explain it, but maybe if you've read that and this, let me know if you agree with that. I think the most interesting part of this book was Stephen's point of view. Even though he was obviously sociopathic and he was manipulative and, you know, unnecessarily cruel, although in his head he doesn't see it that way. But it was so interesting to read about his point of view. It really was. And it felt so genuine and scary almost because it felt so real. So I would recommend this book for people who have read any of the things that I've mentioned and have either enjoyed them, although if you're looking for a romance, this isn't gonna be it for you. However, this talks a lot about just being like a young person and finding this person that you are like enamored by and then being crushed. Uh, there's a lot of relatable shit in here for that, but there's a lot of unlikable characters if you like that. And if you're sort of fascinated by human behavior, I suppose. Also, this is, um, even though they really don't talk about classes or anything like that, the half of the book well, when they were in college was really fun to read about that sort of college lifestyle. Now there are some content warnings. If you don't like drinking, alcohol use, that's the same thing. I meant drug use. Or reading about people with troubled eating habits or eating disorders then definitely look up some content warnings and maybe this book isn't for you. All right, that's it. Um, I'm going to go into a spoiler section now. So if you don't want to hear them and you want to read this book, click off here. Thank you for watching. All right, we are in the spoiler section, people. You have been warned. Okay, let me tell you just the bare bones facts. Lucy and Stephen, if you've just clicked here, Lucy and Stephen are the point of views in this book. We start off the book in the present timeline when these are both adults out of college and they're at a wedding for one of their college friends. They're going to be seeing each other for the first time in three years, I believe. And we immediately get sent back to when Lucy starts college. Steven is like a sophomore. He's two years older than Lucy. He sees Lucy and he totally sort of picks her out and you get in his mind about how he finds these girls and he finds out everything about them and he tries to sort of create a personality that they would enjoy or like be attracted to and it is 
this sort of gain for him, it is almost like compulsive to him to gain the affections of someone, even though he doesn't feel affection toward anyone. And I think in that way, it was kind of interesting reading about this because it's not like he doesn't, he's just being mean to these girls, which is a weird thing to say. He's obviously using them and manipulating them, but he also enjoys their company until they get annoying and then he literally feels nothing about sleeping with somebody else. So he does have a girlfriend at this point named Diana. And throughout their college years, he sleeps with Diana, he sleeps with Lucy, he's cheating on them both. But a lot of the times Lucy is complicit and she knows that she's the girl on the side. And so Lucy is spiraling in college she starts doing a lot of coke, she's drinking, and she does develop disordered eating habits and body image issues, and, and she just gets really, really unhealthy. This whole time, Lucy talks about how there is this unforgivable thing that her mom did, and we learn early on that this is getting so convoluted, so I'm so sorry if none of this is making sense, but when Lucy was 14, she had a crush on this older guy who was like 23, and it was gross because he actually kissed her. He was like her tennis instructor or something it was absolutely disgusting and one day she comes home and she, he's fucking her mom <laughs> lucy freaks out she feels betrayed not only because like her mom cheated on her dad but because she's in love or she thinks that she's in love she's infatuated by this man and she doesn't do anything she sneaks out of the house and she never tells her mom her sister or her dad that she saw this but she just from that moment on hates her mother that crusty crusty tennis instructor man he had a sister that when lucy is 16 dies in a car accident. And it turns out, which we get sprinkled out throughout the book, and then it's some weird huge revelation in the end, but we've already sort of been told, is that Stephen was actually with Macy, the girl who died in the car accident, the night she died. He was drunk and she was sober and she was gonna drive him home. Oh my God, this is so convoluted. But anyway, they're in the car and Steven's like, I'll drive so that you can do things to me while I'm driving. And he crashed the car and it flipped and she died and he left her there because he didn't wanna ruin his future. And you see that he does get triggers of where this upsets him, but not in a way that he's sort of sorry. And it's very interesting. Okay, let me speed through the rest of their relationship. So at the halfway point, Stephen leaves college and he moves to New York to get a job. And he tells Lucy that he's gonna date her for real. Of course, this doesn't end up happening and Lucy totally is just crushed. She has a complete breakdown and she steals all her mother's jewelry and pawns it because she's still pissed at her mom. Um, and she's just spiraling. And at one point she kind of has a breakthrough in clarity and she decides that she's gonna get some help and she's finally like she realizes that Steven is a sociopath and he's just using her and that she needs to be strong and like try to never talk to him again. Before this she had kind of screwed herself over in college because she just started not caring about it. So you sort of feel proud for Lucy for you know being strong but then Steven comes back in the picture because he the way his brain works is that he gets so bored with whoever he's with that he'll start thinking about Lucy because she's always an option for him. And so in the moment, he's like, Lucy is what I need. Lucy is what I need. I just need her right now. So she ends up cheating on her boyfriend. He cheats on his girlfriend. He's always just cheating. And then eventually they end up in New York City and they end up dating. And at, at this point, it seems like it's going to be just a weird actual romance because they seem like they could do this. Like she could just accept that he's different and he could just accept that you know, he could be happy with someone without actually really caring about them. That blows up in their face or Lucy's face really because he doesn't give a shit. And it's at this point where we stop listening to so much of Steven's point of view and we mostly focus on Lucy. She's devastated by this and she is shocked even though she knows herself that she like put herself in a situation. And I think that's what makes this more tolerable than say the toxic relationship at Magnolia Parks. Lucy at least knows that she's being selfish and she's being a bad person and that she's being kind of stupid. But yet I still feel so fucking bad for her. I just, I feel like we've all been there at one point in our lives where we kind of let someone take advantage of us, whether it's, you know, a relationship or at work or whatever. And it just sucks when that truth comes crashing onto you and you realize, you know, I'm, I'm not about to therapize myself here, but then we jump back to the present at the end and they're at this wedding. And we've had flash forwards to this wedding and we see that 
at this point, Stephen is engaged to someone and it was so weird because Lucy is totally devastated by this news. So when we get to the epilogue and she starts saying that it's no big deal, that she's like over it, it really doesn't make too much sense. It was just like all of a sudden she was over it. And so Stephen, of course, comes up with, to her, even though he had sworn when they last broke up three years ago that he was so over her and he wasn't coming back. Of course, we all knew that it was gonna happen. So the difference here is that Lucy in her wisdom that she gained that we did not see she sees him and she sees how his brain works that he's like always playing a chess game this is always just a game to him and that's just how he's going to be like for the rest of his life and she sort of feels sorry for him she doesn't give in to him and he's shocked I think but just before she goes and she wishes him well she says something about like oh by the way did you know Macy that girl who died in the car and he's like no, I don't know who you're talking about. And then she just walks away. But it was just weird how it was handled. That whole epilogue was kind of weird. And then she leaves the wedding and she calls her mom and she realizes that she wants to leave New York and, and lots of dialogue about how she's gonna fix her life. And it just felt a little convenient and I didn't really like it that much. But I'm like glad for Lucy at the same time. I just wish we had seen a little bit more of her healing process because it was really sort of, what's the word, abrupt. I forgot to say though that um, when Steven broke up with Lucy the last time, back three years ago, she did end up talking to her mom and she kind of just blurted out the truth that she saw her mom and that guy that she liked fucking and her mom totally broke down and it turns out that she had told her husband like immediately after it happened. Her mom apologized and Lucy admitted to, you know, pawning her jewelry and they all cried. And at that point I teared up because it was like, oh, this is the actual love story is her and her mom mending their relationship and her realizing that she has someone out there for her. Because I think that did really contribute to her low self-esteem and like allowing herself to be manipulated was just that she didn't feel, I don't know, like honesty in her life, which is kind of ironic that she ended up being this girl that fucked guys behind his girlfriend's backs. So I don't know. I think psychologically, this was an interesting book about human interaction and emotion and things being bottled up about the sort of relationships that we will accept if you know we don't respect ourselves. Oh, I feel like there's so much to say about this book. And there were a lot of good quotes, some that were like kind of haunting and really sad. Like she's talking about how fucked it up it is that she still loves Steven back in the past. And she says, maybe I didn't always like him, but there's a difference between liking someone and loving them. And the power in that difference is enough to shape your life. That is a truth bomb, okay, people? Anyway, that was my first spoiler section. I feel like I just blabbed and talked to you about people that you didn't, like, there were so many characters I was just naming and I was talking so fast and I'm sorry if none of that made sense, but hopefully you got the tea. What a crazy time. Um, I'm so glad I read this book. I will probably be finishing the TV show. However, now that I've finished this book, I know that there's a very big difference just in the drama energies and the sort of dark energy of that show where I feel like there was a lot of weirdly comical things about this. It was sort of witty. So if I binge it by the time I do my monthly wrap up, I'll definitely know, I'll let you know my thoughts on that. But yeah, I'm so excited to read more from this author because I thought this was written so smartly and so like matter of factly and unflinchingly honest, I think. And I did not want to stop reading it. I mean, there was a, a lull right around here, but the first half of it, couldn't put it down. All right, guys, that is it. Oh, I don't even want to edit this video. It's going to be so long, but thank you so much for watching. And let me know if you read this book, tell me all your thoughts, if you watch the show, and I will see you next time. <laughs>